Yeah, I guess so. I guess this would be where it is. Hello! You knew? All right. We, uh, we haven't talked here in this one, huh? Isn't this nice? This is the only place in this whole facility with anything green. I kind of feel silly saying it, but it makes me think of the great outdoors. I think it's the perfect place for a serious conversation. Being surrounded by nature makes me feel happy. I'm not sure what you meant just now, but are you talking about something that happened in another history? What? I know what you can do. Someone told me about it once. They said that you have the ability to transport your consciousness through time. Who told you that? Luna looked down at the music box around her neck. Carefully and delicately, she twisted the dial. Sigma? Aren't you here to ask me something? Why I killed them, perhaps? Well, actually, I already know you didn't do it. Oh? Why do you think I didn't do it? I'd like to know your reasoning. Alright. Might as well start with the old woman. There's no point beating around the bush, I suppose. Dio killed her. Why do you think so? Her left arm had blood splatter all the way up to the elbow, except for a stripe on her wrist that was perfectly clean. What could have caused that? My guess is a bracelet. It got covered with blood and kept her wrist clean. Obviously, none of our bracelets had blood splatter on them, but Dio's bracelet reacted to the luminol. That means Dio's bracelet had to have come from the old woman. Is that your proof? That's why you think Dio killed her? No, that's only enough to suspect him. After all, he could have just taken the bracelet after someone else killed her. Then why are you so sure? Because he confessed. What? After his bracelet reacted to the luminol, I confronted him. Alright, fine. You caught me. I did it. I killed the old bitch and took her bracelet. Wait, when did that happen? In a different timeline. Isn't that against the rules? What rules? I hope you're not going to try and bring up Nox's Ten Commandments. Does it really matter if it's against the rules or fair? The truth is the truth. Let's say that Incident P happens and... After that, the timeline splits into Timeline A and Timeline B. I don't think it's unfair to base a theory in Timeline A on information I found in Timeline B. After all, A and B both came from the same place, P. If you trace the history of both timelines, you'd end up back at Incident P. Now, if I could just change what happened in Incident P by visiting Timeline A or B, then yes, it'd be a different story. I don't know that it'd be unfair per se, but I'd certainly be breaking some pretty big rules. Like, you know, the principle of causality. I'm sure that Dio killed the old woman. By extension, that means you couldn't. I'm assuming Dio wasn't originally intended to be a part of the Nonary game. Somehow he got in, took the old woman's place. That's how he ended up as Quark's partner. This is just an educated guess, but I have a feeling his plan was to replace one of us. I doubt it mattered which one. I have no idea why he'd want to do something like that, and I don't know how he did it either. The fact remains that he did. He hid in the warehouse on floor A and waited for someone to come out of one of those rooms. That someone turned out to be the old woman. She left Quark asleep in the AB room and came out on her own. Somehow he managed to get close enough to stab her. He did it near the wall with the graffiti. I'm guessing he stabbed her from behind so that he wouldn't get any blood on himself. As soon as she was dead, he wrapped the knife up in a handkerchief. No, it actually... He probably took the bracelet first. Then he would have needed to wipe the blood off, so he used the handkerchief for that too. 
Anyway, the point is, he got the bracelet and put it on. Then he wrapped the knife up and hid it between the rightmost AB room and its neighbor. He probably didn't expect that they'd move. Or he would have put it somewhere else. After that, he headed back into the AB room that the woman had left. Quark would have still been fast asleep, so as far as he knew, Dio was there the whole time. This does raise a few other questions, but I'll save those for later. For now, let's move on to the other murders. Well, actually, one of them probably isn't a murder. I'm talking about Alice. I'm pretty sure she... committed suicide. All of humanity is going to die. Adults killed everyone. Everyone! There won't be a I... She'd been infected with Radical Six. I think the infection caused her to take her own life. She used Dio's knife, which she found in the warehouse after the AB removed, and exposed it. She took it with her, and then used it to stab herself in the crew quarters. Next are Clover and Ten Miyoji. The first question is who put the handcuffs on them? The clue is the message Clover left, 016. If you think about it, doesn't make sense. Clover's left hand was in the handcuffs. That means she would have had to write with her right hand on her right thigh. I feel like it would have been pretty hard to do that, you know? Why not just use your left thigh? Thing is, I think she did. When she died, her legs slumped together. The message got transferred to her right thigh. We just never saw the original because we didn't bother to check the other leg. In other words, she wasn't trying to write 016. Holy shit! <laughs> this fucking game. Now, about K and Dio. I think there's a pretty good chance Dio killed K. Here's how I imagine it happened. K probably sprayed Dio's bracelet with aluminol. We found the bottle in K's robe. He wouldn't have seen the reaction immediately, but Dio would have known what was coming. As soon as K turned the lights off, it'd be clear that Dio had taken the old woman's bracelet. My guess is he decided to take preemptive action. When we found their bodies, the lights in the rec room were on. Maybe K turned to switch the light off, and Dio took that opportunity to attack him. K was hurt pretty badly, but he didn't die right away. He probably managed to grab the spear and stab Dio, pinning him to the wall. Then he died. So that accounts for all six bodies, and none of them are your fault. Sigma. I'm glad you don't think I did it, but all of your theories are just, well, theor- Like Alice committing suicide. How can you be sure? Say she was infected with Radical Six. She could have been murdered before her symptoms even began to present themselves. As for Clover and Tenmyoji, I could easily have killed them. You don't have any proof that Clover's message was mirrored like you say, or even that it was supposed to refer to Dio. Even if it did, that's not conclusive evidence of his guilt. The same goes for Kay and Dio. I could have killed them both. I just... Why do you trust me so much? I'm a machine. I'm part of this place. How can you trust a machine? That's why I trust you. What? I trust you because you're a robot. Your robotness is just one more reason you can't be the killer. Well, three more reasons. Have you ever heard of the three laws of robotics? Rule one. A robot may not injure a human being or, through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. A robot without the three laws is just a bunch of metal and plastic. Sigma. Luna, I have to ask you. Can you tell me, well... Everything you know? 
Your mind is in the central server. You should know everything that's happened here. Eventually, we reach the bench. Luna quietly sat down and, just like last time, I lowered myself down beside her. You were right. I didn't kill them. How should I explain? Well, actually, you got most of it right. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Tell me everything. Well, first, yes. Theo did sneak into the facility. He used the large cargo elevator and came into the warehouse on floor A through the number 9 door. Since the game hadn't started yet, anyone could go through it. <laughs> that doesn't really sound like sneaking. It sounds more like he just walked in. Yes, I guess you could say that. He did get in pretty easily, but that's because Zero Jr. lured him here. <laughs> what do you mean? Theo wasn't a surprise. Both Zeros knew that he was going to come. So they brought him here? In a way. Because his presence was an important part of Zero's project. What? Okay. Sure. Sure. The dude that affect... Whatever. I can't go into that right now. We'd be here forever. Right now, let's just focus on the murders, okay? Anyway, Theo found his way in. They made sure he didn't know that he was actually being let. So why'd he come to here? To make sure Zero's project failed. His first step was to pretend to be one of the players. As for how he did that, you had it pretty much right. The old woman was the first one out, and he killed her under the graffiti. He put a bracelet on after he wiped the blood off it with the handkerchief. Then he wrapped the knife up and hid it between the 5th and 6th AB rooms. <laughs> Counting from the left in their original placement. In other words, the rightmost room would be the 6th room, and the room next to it would be the 5th. Right. After that, he went back into the 5th AB room where Quark was sleeping. Then he just waited for Quark to wake up. <laughs> What were you doing while that was happening? Nothing. I couldn't do anything. My body had been turned off. Zero Jr. had powered me down. My body wasn't activated until after Dio went into the fifth room. I couldn't help her. All I could do was watch while she was murdered. Everything in this place is controlled by Zero Jr. I couldn't try and prevent Dio from getting in either. If Zero Jr. controls everything, then he was the one who moved the sixth room with the crane? Yes, that's right. Zero Jr. moved the room, not me. Then who moved the old woman? Me. It took me ten minutes to get out of my AB room once I was turned back on. I ran over to check on her as soon as I did. Then I carried her back to the room I'd been in. Why did you do that? Because I was ordered to. What? Luna, listen to me very carefully. As you already know, the final stage of the project begins in two hours. This will be the culmination of many years of hard work. We cannot afford failure. Yes. I understand. Then let's make sure. What is your mission? Enter the Nonary game as one of the participants and observe the actions of the other players. Ensure that they do what they are supposed to and guide them down the correct paths. How many players will there be? Myself and seven others, ma'am. Will you be participating as well? Yes. Our plan dictates that I must. An individual by the name of Dio will be entering this facility presently. He has been led to believe he is doing so undetected. You've been briefed on him already, correct? Yes. 
He will murder the first person to leave one of the A-B rooms and take their place. If a pair is the first out, he'll probably kill both of them. That's all the information I've been given on him, ma'am. Um, I... Is there a problem? With all due respect, ma'am, I would like to state that I don't feel right about this. We know someone is going to be killed, and we're just going to let it happen? I also have doubts about the use of Radical Six. Are... are you sure? Infecting all these people with such a horrible disease. What? That is none of your concern. Your only concern is to follow your orders. But... Luna, I am giving you an order. I am in command, and you do as I say. You are programmed to do as I say. You know this. Yes. Good. Now, I have one final order. Another order, ma'am? Yes. When you leave the A-B room, the person Dio has killed will still be there. I would like you to move them. Where? To the room you are about to enter. The sixth A-B room. But... why? Not your concern. As a participant in the game, you must have as little knowledge of it as possible. That is why I have made sure you are unable to access any classified data. There are things you must not know. In order for this project to succeed, we need you to be as close to a clean slate as possible. There are some things you already know, which ideally you would not. Unfortunately, this is unavoidable, so you must refrain from divulging anything you know about the project to the other participants. You must never tell anyone what you know about Dio, or the body, or that you carried it to the 6th AB room. You will have to pretend you know nothing more than the rest of the participants. Is that an order? Yes. Do I make myself clear? Yes. After that, I went into the A-B room as I'd been told to. As soon as I stepped inside, my body deactivated. But since my brain is in the main computer, I was still awake. So I still saw everything. While I waited, I used the security cameras to see what was going on in the rest of the facility. And you saw the old woman being murdered. Yes, it was... hard. What I was seeing made no sense. Several of my higher level processes nearly failed. To think that she would be the first person to come out. I think she knew that Dio was going to kill her. When she'd said she had one final order for me, I didn't understand what she meant. Like a fool, I told her I didn't approve, when I had no idea what she was prepared to do. When she died, whatever I have that passes for a heart, felt like it snapped in two. I think I understand. Everything you did, you did because you'd been ordered to? Yes. And it was the old woman who gave you those orders. Then is she Zero Senior? No. What? She gave you the orders. She did, but she wasn't the only person I took orders from. There was someone else. Yes. And that person is Zero Senior. Yes. They worked together to develop the project she mentioned. So I suppose, technically, my orders came from both of them. And they were both controlling Zero Junior, too. I told you before that Zero Junior moved the 6th AB room. 
Although that's strictly true, he didn't do it of his own free will. They ordered him to do it. He was following orders just like me. I don't know. I really don't. Maybe they did it so that people wouldn't suspect me. If they didn't want people to suspect you, then why have you moved the body? Eventually, we figure out the rooms have been moved and that she was in your room. Then, maybe they wanted the opposite. You mean... Maybe they wanted you to suspect me. That doesn't make sense either. If they wanted people to suspect you, why move the room? You're right. Then maybe they only wanted certain people to be suspicious of me. Huh. You mean like Alice? Yes. Perhaps they wanted Alice to find the handkerchief and the knife. That would explain why they moved the room. So they somehow knew Dio would hide the knife there. Yes, I think so. But how could they? Well, whatever the reasons were, Alice did notice that the room was moved. Which meant that Clover also figured it out. And just like you said, Alice used the knife to... to take her life. Clover didn't realize that, though. Or perhaps she didn't want to. In any event, she decided that I must have killed Alice to keep her quiet. So she confronted me. It was right after the second round of the A-B game. Using Phi's timetable, that would be zero hours, zero minutes. Wait, you were listening to us in the security office? Yes, that wasn't all I was listening to though. I know everything that happened in the facility after my body collapsed. You were watching through the security cameras? Yes, I was. I could see and hear everything. Anyway, we're at zero hours, zero minutes. I was in the hallway on floor A when Clover found me and took me to room two in the crew quarters. We entered at about zero hours, one minute. She was very... forceful. I know you killed Alice. Tell me the truth and I'll let you live. Now fess up! I'm only gonna give you one chance. If you lie or try to play dumb or something, I'll kill you right in front of her! I told her the truth, of course. I explained that I hadn't killed Alice, that she'd been infected with Radical Six, and it had caused her to kill herself. Clover was never going to believe that, though. We argued about it for nearly nine minutes. It wasn't just Alice she asked me about. She asked me about the murder of the old woman, and about the A-B room being moved. She wasn't very nice about it, but I couldn't answer any of her questions. Because of your orders? Yes. Then, at about zero hours, ten minutes, she must have run out of patience. She stuck her hand in her pocket and started moving toward me. She backed me up against the wall and pulled her hand out of her pocket. She was holding the injection gun. I tried to take it away from her. I even screamed for help. She refused to let go, of course, while we were fighting over it. Whoa, hold on a minute. The trigger got pulled in the fight. I get that part. I don't understand why it did anything to you. you. Mean because I'm a golem? One of my yeah. orders was always to act like I was one of the players. A human. Any human injected with that amount of tubocurarine would die. That's why you, uh, died? To keep up the facade? No. I collapsed because Zero Jr. turned off the power to my body again. He probably felt he had to. Maintaining the illusion that I was human was probably in his orders, too. So to make it look like I had died, he turned the power off. Whatever the case, it was an accident. I don't think Clover ever intended to actually kill me. She only took the injection gun to try and threaten me. How can you be so sure? She pulled the trigger. When I collapsed, she looked terrified. She checked for my pulse and listened to see if I was breathing. 
She also shook my body and called out to me several times. If she'd meant to kill me, why do all that? Okay, so the so the entire solution here is she's a dumb cunt. All right, cool. After a few moments, she ran off to the infirmary to get the AED. You mean the defib? Yes. That uses an electric shock to restart the heart. Correct. So that's why she yes. left. At zero, zero hours, 11 minutes, 40 seconds, Clover left the cabin. She ran off toward the infirmary. On the way, she bumped into Dio. Dio? Yes. I guess she just saw him, really. They didn't talk. She just ran past. And he just watched her yes. go? I imagine he was curious, of course. He probably wondered what she was doing. But he chose not to go after her. He had something else to do. At zero hours, twelve minutes, Dio enters the room. He seemed pretty surprised to find my body. Yeah, I bet. It didn't take him long to get over it, though. What imagine of wood? What did he do then? He'd gone there for two reasons. One was to get Alice's bracelet, which was a blue solo. Right. Without it, Dio and Kay, the yellow pair, wouldn't be able to get through the secondary door. Yeah, but he couldn't find it. Of course. Phi had already taken it by then. Yes, but there was something else he wanted to do, too. He was there to take the knife. Removing it was... But why did he want the knife? Was it because he used it? No, I don't think so. Then what do you think? I think he didn't want anyone to see the engraving on the knife's blade. That's why he hid it so well after he killed the old woman. Why wouldn't he want anyone to see that? Do you remember what it said? There was a word engraved on the blade. Myrmidons. Yes. What does Myrmidons mean? It's the name of the organization he belongs to. Uh, what is it? Like a club? I don't think so. Well, what is it um, then? I don't really know. No idea? I'm afraid not. Well, wait. Wasn't he here to try and stop whatever Zero was doing? Yes. Then, wouldn't that mean that he's on our side? Um, I don't know about that. He's killed four people. I'm not really sure he's on anyone's side. You got a point. This is ridiculous. It's the enemy of my enemy isn't my friend. May I continue? Yeah. After he took the knife, Dio rifled through what few belongings Alice had. Luna said he didn't seem to be looking for anything in particular. Probably checking to see if she had anything useful. That was where he found the key to Kay's suit. Didn't seem to have any particular reason for taking it, at least as far as Luna could tell. Alright. He heard Kay opening the cyan door and ran out. When he left, he was heading toward the infirmary. My guess is that he was going after Clover. He found her with the AED. She was probably planning to just ignore him and head back, but Dio didn't let her. Hey, wait. Just what are you planning to do with that thing? Thinking about trying to resuscitate Luna? And why would you want to do that? You were the one who killed her, weren't you? When Clover tried to push past Dio, Luna said they began the to fight. What do you think you're doing? Dio pulled the knife out of his pocket and pointed it at Clover's throat. That was when he showed up. Dio, what the hell are you doing? None of your goddamn business. Stay out of this, you senile old shit. Like hell, you son of a bitch. He let out a yell and leapt toward Dio. The younger man dodged him easily, lashed out with the knife. Tenmyoji caught Dio's hand with a grunt. For a moment, the two men struggled. 
Then, as the knife edged closer, we wrapped his other hand around the blade and tried to force it away. But Dio was a much younger and stronger man, and the wound Tenmyoji gave himself with the knife didn't do him any favors. Put up a valiant fight, with a roar Dio threw him off, and Tenmyoji collapsed to the floor. What are you going to do? Let's see... How about this? Ah! <laughs> How cute. You two really look great together, you know? What are you going to do to us? Isn't it obvious? I'm gonna handcuff you to a sink. Actually, I already have. Are you gonna beat us to death or something? Ugh, no. Nothing so tasteless. Well, what are you going to do then? How'd you like to make a bet? A bet? You've got... Oh, 20 some minutes until the primary white doors open. So I'd say you've got 25 minutes until they close. Give or take. If somebody happens to come by here before the doors close, you might live. But if nobody finds you, well... We'll be penalized. Exactly. So... I suggest you start screaming for help now. Unfortunately for you, just about all the rooms in this place are behind at least two nice thick doors. So unless they're pretty close, nobody's gonna hear you scream. Well, I'm off to the Floor B warehouse, okay? Enjoy your last 25 minutes. Later. Twenty-five minutes passed and no one came. Of course, by then there were only three other people who could have come, apart from Dio. You mean me, Fi, and K? Yes, you were in the crew quarters at this point. K had told us about you. We'd also noticed the knife in Alice's chest had been removed, if only we'd known what was happening. Unfortunately for Clover and Tenmyoji, their time had come. Once the primary white door closed, both of their bracelets injected them with Soparil. The anesthetic, right? Yes. Almost immediately, they started to feel sleepy. I think that's when Clover realized she was definitely going to die. That was when she decided to leave her message. Just as you said, she wrote on her left thigh with her right hand. Leave it to Clover to make one of the letters lowercase. That idiot. Yes. Someone's gonna be like, KZ, she got the soap rose, not her fault. Nah. Nah. Underwear girl's dumb. As for what happened in the rec room, well, I guess I don't really need to tell you. Your theory was essentially correct. What you said was what happened. Alright, cool. Then we don't need to see it, right? Yep. It's like, I, I get it. I didn't actually care enough to get every single bit of, like, here's how he did this and did this. I didn't really need that. I kind of wanted to just move on, yes. but hey. If she wants to fucking talk my ear off, I guess she can. When did Kay get the Luminol? After they went through the white door, Dio and Kay found themselves in the director's office. When they were done there, they headed back to floor A to look for everyone else. They went to the crew quarters first, then to the infirmary. Of course, they found Clover and Tenmyoji's bodies there. Dio expected to find them, of course, but he pretended to be shocked. Anyway, Kay checked them over for anything useful. And that was when he found the Luminol. Right. That's everything that happened. Do you have okay. any questions? Well, what do you think? Does a bear shit in the woods? Um. Well, the first thing is Quark's bracelet. Why wasn't it in the infirmary? Tenmyoji had it. Then when Dio attacked him, 
It fell out of his pocket. Why did Tamioji have the bracelet? I told him where also, it was. Also, did I fuck up? Did I say fucking... Yeah, why was it in the infirmary? infirmary not why wasn't it? My bad. I realized that was wrong we immediately. With Fi and Tenmyoji? Yeah, when he sprayed us. Right after then. When he left the rec room, he went toward the green door to look for Quark. I ran into him at the end of the hallway, where the three doors and the switch are. That was when I told him. Look, Tenmyoji, the center door is unlocked. He took off through it without another word. That was the treatment room, right? Yes. Where Quark was right. sleeping? It only took him a moment. As soon as he saw Quark, he ran to his pod and started crying. Yes. The display on the pod showed Quark's vital signs. It was obvious he was alive the moment he looked at it. Next to the pod was Quark's bracelet. That was how Tenmyoji got it. Why was Quark's bracelet off? I took it off. Aluminum foil. What? Oh, you found it? Did you know that aluminum foil has electromagnetic shielding properties? What? Here's an exciting fact. Your heart creates a bunch of... Anyway, the pretty fancy little bracelets pick up on that. They're always watching. So if you wrap a bracelet in aluminum foil, it'll just... Well, I guess I know how I'm gonna live in that... I guess we figured out the five minutes... Uh, of life block, then. I have to assume this is what they wanted. Yes. All you have to do is wrap it around your bracelet. And the bracelet thinks your heart is stopped? Yes. Holy shit. It was that easy all along. Anyway, I used some aluminum foil to get Quark's bracelet off. Then I put it next to the pod. Wait. Why was Quark in the pod to begin with? Oh, that's easy. I put him there. When did you do Remember that? Remember when we were first looking for Quark? I found him unconscious near the entrance to the Golem Bay. So you carried him? Yes. Were you the one who unlocked the treatment center door? No. I was not. I do not have the authority to operate any of this facility's machinery. So Zero Jr. That's right. He reactivated your body, too. I don't get any of this. Why the hell did he do that? Guess it wasn't really him that did it, huh? He was just doing what Zero Sr. and the old lady told him. Everything leads back to them, right? Of course it does. Well, where does that leave us? Are you gonna tell, tell me? What? Isn't it obvious? What this project is. Everything that happens here has something to do with it. I literally came into this room hoping that we could figure out what this is, and instead she decided to describe the events that happened, which I kind of assumed what was going on after the whole Dio reveal thing. I was like, I don't need to know to this. To play the nonary game. Where are we supposed to play that it? That was part of the project. Why did Alice kill herself? Because she was infected with Radical Six. How did she get infected? Zero Senior and the old woman did that. It was a necessary evil. It had to happen for the project to succeed. What would have happened if Alice hadn't committed suicide? Clover wouldn't have suspected me, and she wouldn't have accidentally... Um, killed me. 
Then what? I wouldn't have collapsed, and Dio wouldn't have found my body. That would have meant the confrontation in the infirmary never took place. In other words, you're saying Clover and Tamiyoji died for this project? Yes. Well, actually, it was the tubo curing. They were only injected because of their bracelets. No, no, game was part of the project, and that's one more way it killed them. I guess, if you want to look at it that way. What about Kay and Dio? Why would they kill each other? Because Dio killed the old woman. He was worried about getting caught, so he tried to kill Kay before he could find out the truth. Then if Dio hadn't killed the old lady, what happened in the rec room wouldn't have taken yes. place. So let me ask you this. Why did Dio kill her? So that he could pose as one of the participants. And why did he do that? To disrupt the project. Then why did she let him kill her? The same reason they did all of this. It was a necessary evil. The project couldn't be allowed to fail. What is the project? I'm gonna have a fucking mental breakdown. Six people died here. Four of them were murdered, one way or another, by Dio. At first, that makes it look like Dio's the reason they all died, but that's not true, is it? All of them, all six of them, they died for this project. That means that the murderer, or I guess I should say murderers, were the old lady and Zero Senior. Whether it was infecting them with Radical Six or engineering this entire thing, even one of their own deaths. Luna, tell me, what is this project about? Who's the old woman and who is Zero? Sigma. Would you... hug me? What? Oh, okay. Don't, don't hug me there, that's bad. Like, literally. This feels... nice. That's neat. That's great. Can, can you give me some information? I've just heard 30 minutes of extra... Yo, yo, you're losing hair. Are you a cancer pa- Oh, that's bad. So, uh... Bad chemo? Uh... I'm sorry. My ABT is usually held in place by muscle fiber. But after Clover gave me the tubal curarine... Alright, uh, I does, get it. Does it scare you? No, not really. You're, you're a harmless robot. This is what I really look like. I'm a golem. Just a... a machine. A jumble of metal and plastic that pretends to be real. Huh. I wrapped my arms around Luna and hugged her as tight as I could. You believed in me this whole time. Hmm. Even though I look like... like this? Of course. I trust you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wish I could stay here forever. You feel so nice. But I think my time is up. I've done things I really shouldn't have. Do you remember what you asked me earlier? About if Zero Jr. had reactivated my body? Remember? The truth is... He didn't. I did. I went to the part of the core that controls Zero Jr. And I hacked it. Yes. What? That was the first thing. The second. Do you know what the second one was? If I had really wanted to... I could have saved Clover and Tenmyoji. Then Kay and Dio probably wouldn't have killed each other. That's not all. I could have stopped Alice from killing herself, and I could have even saved the old woman at the very beginning. In other words, I had the ability to disobey my orders, but I... I didn't. That's the second thing. I broke the first law. I was scared. I, I was afraid to die. Obviously, hacking the core and taking control of Zero Junior's systems is very, very bad. 
golems who don't follow orders can become dangerous, so we're terminated if we disobey. You lose access to your body, of course. But everything that's stored in the core, your memories, your consciousness, is deleted. Are you saying- yes, very soon now I'll be gone. Zero Junior is probably recovering himself right now. Once he's done, I doubt I'll be around much longer. Why? I watched six oh. people die and did nothing. Oh. I deserve this. No! You know you don't. Even if you did something, you would have been killed anyway. You can't blame yourself. You get what you could. You're not wrong. This game fucking sucks. You, you still haven't told me what this game is, by the way. If you have the ability to do that before Zero Jr. wakes up, uh, that'd be great. Oh, Sigma. Thank you. I'm... I'm really glad I met you. Hey, Luna. It's gonna be okay. Now tell me what this game's about. Please. Can, can, can you do that? My time's up. Yeah, but could you could you do that for At me? At least I get to die in your arms. Luna, you, I asked you a question earlier. Thank uh, you. Oh, that's bad. Sigma. And goodbye, Doctor. Doctor? What? But she couldn't answer. Squeezed my eyes shut and held her, unable to bear the thought of letting any more of her slip away. So in the end, she told me nothing, except I'm a doctor. Apparently I'm a doctor. That or she was talking to doctor. You know, like when dead people, like, see someone else at the end? Huh. <sighs> Get rid of the UI. I think we're done. Thank you. Alright. With that, Luna has come to an end.